Hello, dear awakening people all around the world. I'm recording this message from Vermont in the United States, where I'm currently residing. And I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the current global pandemic of COVID-19 and how we as awakening people can and should respond to these trying circumstances. So try not spend too long wor uh, focusing on the worry of this pandemic, but more to open up a different perspective of what this might be bringing to us. So my entire life, I've been looking at the world and looking at the way that we as a collective humanity have been living and notice that ultimately it's not bringing us a lot of satisfaction, but at the same time, it's creating immense destruction through environmental catastrophe, through um, social inequity, and um, a widening gap between those with and those without. And here in 2020, a pandemic comes, and it offers this great pause, this pause of how we've always done, how we've always operated. And most people who I'm working with professionally, um, with their yoga practices, with meaning making, a lot of people are totally paralyzed by this. And rightfully so. When we build our world based around our sense observation, what we see, what we taste, the material world, and we form this kind of hardened ego, when all of our world stops and we can't have the same orientation that we've had for our entire lifetime, we panic. Because there is a real threat, but there's also the perceived threat of losing what we are accustomed to. And so that's what I bring to you as the opportunity that COVID-19 offers us. For those who are practicing techniques of vitality and awakening some sense of okayness or impermanence, this proves as a vital opportunity to understand yourself more. So when I said before that this is a great pause, it literally is a suspension of the normal operating factors of the world. When the normal operating of the fa uh, normal operating factors of the world pause, you're left to observe yourself. The challenging thing with that is that if you're not used to pausing and looking and you've constantly chased after the craving of what you like, what you think you want, this is a terrifying time. But when you see this as an opportunity to pull the awareness inward and sit closer to a sense of inner peace, a sense of something that cannot change, even if the railroads don't run, even if your stores are not open, we have the opportunity to reveal a true self, something that is not changing something that has always been and will always be. So COVID-19 serves as an opportunity to really take inventory. How much do I know myself? How much peace can I experience? Is my peace, is my happiness conditional? Only when I have everything as I want it to be, will I be happy? For many of us, that is the way we operate. And this will be scary if all that external awareness is then changed for you. Your stores are closed, your schools are closed, your work is closed. Now, I don't want to, in any sense, in any sense invalidate the true struggle when money feels scarce, when resources feel scare, scarce, it's a horrifying and terrifying predicament to face. But what I say to you folks all around the world 
is that if you slow down and instead of just looking through these eyes, you look to the spiritual center, you look to a place that transcends a physical reality, you may be able to listen and you may be able to see that you are okay. That not only are you okay, you're probably going to shift towards your true nature through these trying circumstances. And again, I know that they're trying. We all have been interrupted. But if you pause, if you remember to breathe, and if you pull your awareness inwards, we may be in the opportunity of revealing who we truly are beyond conditionality, beyond this incessant ego that we're trying to feed through what we do, where we go, who we're with. Here's the opportunity to be at peace when everything around you changes. So this is a time where we bolster that ability to know peace by doing the things that nourish our vitality. So I'll include throughout the coming weeks and months, I will include numerous different techniques to help you in, in this time, this trying time. The question is how to integrate them and how to keep reminding yourself this. So a simple way to do this every day is to start with auto-suggesting the mind. Things are different, but it is an opportunity to practice. If we just say things are different and I'm scared and I'm worried, the, this kind of spiral of anxiety and doubt and dysregulation will occur. But if you auto-suggest your mind, things are different, but this is an opportunity to know my nature. You start that every day. This is a time of practice. This is a time to listen to nature, to listen and notice how out of balance we have been as a collective humanity. This is what COVID-19 offers us. I don't want to diminish or um, not pay attention to the immense suffering that's happening, the loss of life. This is a tragedy. And simultaneously, this is a chance for us to practice. So as awakening people, I hope that this message comes to you as a sense of opportunity, a chance to find solace, to find peace, in and amongst a completely trying and dysregulating time. And I hope you'll stay tuned in to the continuing videos and techniques that I post so that we can continue to practice even remote. Please visit briantobinyoga.com and take time to um, be in touch. Let me know how I can support you at this trying time. And have wonderful practice. Have wonderful times of quietude, reflection, observation. And thank you for all of the work you're doing to awaken your true nature, to awaken your innate happiness, peace, and joy. Namaste.